Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a special guest, Sam, who's a member at MIC, and he's argue- I think he's one of the youngest members, other than his tab group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's cool to have him on, and and we've been seeing some cool consistency and and growth from him. So, uh, thank you for coming on, Sam. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Of course, man. Of course, we've had uh, Xander's your tab, right? Yeah, Xander and yep. a couple others, but Xander's the main one. Yeah. yeah. So we we had Xander on a previous episode. So if you haven't checked that one out, um, but I so I guess we'll get into it. So I guess Sam, how did you kind of get into this? How did you start trading, and and how did you kind of get into MIC eventually? Yeah. So trading was actually, it was really random for me. Um, I've always been like very entrepreneurial. So I've always been interested in um, investing in the stock market. Like as soon as I turned 18, I had opened up a Roth IRA, like all that type of stuff. But um, I was at, at my, my job one day and I, I paint houses and I was just sitting there and, and I got on the job. And I was like, all right, I want to, I want to do something good with my time. So I literally went on uh, Apple podcasts and I searched in the word stocks. That's all I searched yep. in, just to find some podcast. And um, yep. of course, Tim Sykes pulled up, right? And, um, that's the name that comes up with everything. So everybody, I, yeah, I just I watched one video or one podcast on just day trading penny stocks, and within two weeks, I never looked back. And that was in uh, that was in late January of 2021. So it's okay. been so, almost so you're 18. Year. Yeah, so you I was, 18? Yeah. Yep. yeah, I was 18. So. I was in um, I was in Tim's room for about four months, something like that. Um, yep. And I really respect him. I was very thankful for that time there. Um, he's really good at keeping you motivated, keeping you kind of in the yeah. of things. Um, but after a while, I just realized that I wasn't really learning a process that I could come to the market and trade with every day. It's a really classic story, you know. I just I just didn't have a process that I felt like I could repeat every single day, and um, that's when Xander and I, we just started hearing about MIC um, and the Be The Trader podcast. And Wait, do you guys know each other in real life? Or did you guys no, meet? No, no we, we met each other on, on Twitter through some of Tim's comments. Oh, shit. Yeah, and we just like, yeah, we just realized we were both young and we were both working like every single day, all day. And so I love just, that, dude. I love yeah. that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so we just, he, he was the one who first reached out and then we just started talking and then we formed this next gen traders group which is like seven of us now so Fuck but yeah, um, dude, that's sick i love it yeah yeah so that's yeah we just we just heard about mic and we decided to give it one month just to try because yeah. we were you know we were doing otcs on the long side before mic and they were like all right we'll do it one month we don't want to mess up what we've done we'll just give it one month and we'll see how it feels we'll watch some videos yeah. uh it was about a week and we were no longer watching the OTC market. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like one week and we were nothing but MIC videos, listed market, and yeah. have not Were you having yet. success before that? Like, were you finding some, like, short-term success with OTCs? Or was it just – I know that market's tough. Like, I, I never yeah. personally got into it. I, I just skipped that whole phase. Like, I just – I found small caps first. Yeah. And, but I, and I know, like, guys like Jack, and, like, there's some amazing OTC traders out there. Right. Um, but were you finding success with that? And like, how is that going? Yeah, not really. Um, statistically we weren't, uh, and, and to be fair, when we were really kind of getting our groove with it, the market shifted and it wasn't very good for the OTC market. So I don't yeah. want to, don't want to piss on it too much, but, uh, we weren't really finding that much consistency. My, my first trade ever was a first green day swing and I made like, you know, 150 bucks. And then my second trade, I lost like $300 and it scared the yeah. crap out of me. Um, and then it was just like two wins or two losses and one win and then three losses and one win. So it was definitely not consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, so then you found MIC, you guys were there. Uh, what did you like about it initially when you got in? Like what was like the biggest difference between that and like previous rooms you've kind of seen and like what kind of got you? Cause you're still here and it's been obviously yeah. now over a year. So, so yeah. what kind of switched that for you? So it's really simple. Um, the thing that hooked us initially was the education um, with other videos that we'd seen, other DVDs we'd watched. It was repeating the same thing, very basic level. Um, half of the video was filled with going through Twitter. The other half of the video was talking about uh, students. 
And yeah. so when we came to MIC and we started going through the videos, we're like, oh, we're actually learning something. We're actually learning what does this mean and what does that mean and how to do this. And when you see this, respond this way, right? So it's like we were actually that's cool. getting real education. We could watch video after video and we were learning new stuff. Um, that's cool. So that I like was, that. So, yeah. So now, like, because where you're at now, like, you're starting to find some pretty good consistency. Like, I see you posting your charts a lot. I feel yeah. like you and Xander have, have really grown a lot and i and i see it so yeah. what kind of made that fundamental shift for you like because it, it's i feel like that started i don't want to say too recently but it, it was in the past like a couple months here yeah what what changed for you what what brought you to this point of like going from inconsistent like not really having your niche in process to to where you're at right now yeah that's a good question um there's so many factors it's hard to say this and this um i i just read a blog post and it was about um exploration and then exploitation and it was, it's about how to find consistency in your trading. I, I posted the blog uh, yesterday, um, cool. but they talk about how like for a while before a big breakthrough comes, you have to be exploring. You've got to try all these different variables and whatnot before you can exploit it and actually find consistency. And so I'd say the first couple months in MIC, that's what was happening. Like we weren't really too consistent because we were really trying like everything you know, all day faders, yeah. you're trying death lines, first resistance, yeah. <laughs> VWAP rejections, VWAP reclaims. And we weren't really, you know, finding consistency with it through, you know, August and September. Um, and then it was the 1st of October. I can remember this, like, without a doubt, it was the 1st of October and everything just started to click with us um, as far as the MIC process. And it sounds so simple, but it was just like, after a while, when you've been studying enough and you've been watching enough videos, you just look at a chart and you start to go, oh, wait, I heard this somewhere. Or, oh, wait, I know what this means. Or, yep. okay, this, this, I'm supposed to respond this way, right? And so that clicked for us about at, um, at the beginning of October. And then all of a sudden, we just started to figure out what our edge was, which for, we're both a little bit different, but for me, it's outer lines. Um, first resistance or on really yep. broken down charts when it's got to cool. get really extended to get up to VWAP. I love uh, shorting VWAP on those. Um, I like so that. Yeah, thing. going into October, we just yeah. started to click and we narrowed down what we were focusing on. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, because like I'm obviously in weekend mentoring. So, like, I see a ton of your charts all the time. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to say, I know that you've been going through a lot of stuff with your dad passing recently. And yeah. uh, there's been a ton of challenges with that. So, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. And, you know, whatever you're going through, like, I'm always here for you, bro. But, yeah, um, yeah I'd say that, you know, you kind of brought something up recently that, um, you know, tweaked my interest as well. And that was more so the, um, you know, just like MIC and being advanced, you know, like you never really think about how advanced MIC is until you're in other rooms. And yeah random people are asking like, what's VWAP or what's support and resistance, right? And, um, you know, I think just like moving on, you kind of talked about like consistency and like, you know, what kind of like took you to get over that yeah. kind of like hump. And I guess my question more so for you would be um, for anyone who's kind of newer or who's kind of been in the same, you know, position as you, what are steps that you would take to kind of, you know, get someone over the hump for consistency or, you know, kind of, um, you know, anyone who's like maybe questioning MIC or, you know, questioning trading in general, what are kind of tips that you would give them to kind of maybe keep going and just um, staying on that track and yeah. just, you know, putting in the work? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, the first word that comes to mind for me is full immersion. You have to immerse yourself in trading and the process and what you're doing. Um, if you are not completely dedicated to succeeding at trading, don't even mess with it. Like if you aren't 110% sure. there, if you're not ready to put in 18 hours a day for two years, three years, never giving up until you find consistency, like you've got to know what you're getting into. And when you have accepted that, it's just a nonstop, right? Just keep going. But for me, like as far as if you're just joining the MIC or something, you have to immerse yourself in the process and that doesn't just mean watching the videos that doesn't just mean like oh this is a first resistance this is the process right 
it's like the process is everything and 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 mic it's freaking go you know be in after hours in the evenings right talk with the community read main chat during the market hours have a tab group where you're talking with people about trading the whole time um watch you know videos in your free time like you've got to immerse yourself in every aspect of it and it has to become your life like if you're if you're trying to become successful at trading and then every evening you're hanging out with friends and the weekends you know you forget that you're trying to learn how to day trade it's going to be very hard for you to succeed you've got to like yep. commit to it but find yourself people who you can talk to that is really important when you feel alone it's really hard to stay motivated so find people who you can talk to which the moderators and mic are always available um there's so many people if you send a message out in after hours you're going to get like 10 people at least who respond to you or dm you you know so find yeah. people who you can talk with, find people who keep you going because it's really difficult alone. And then just yeah. commit to it from day one. Just commit to watching the people, video, to watching people the don't know, People don't know this, man. Sorry to cut you off, but I just no, want to no, interject no. while you're on this subject because when MIC first started, it was like guys like, it was like me, Harry, uh, Tom, like Joe, like all the mods now. It's funny like hearing you talk about this because when MIC started, there was no video library. It was like week yeah. to week. We were like getting videos as they came out. <laughs> and like, we would spend like, I swear it was like 70% of our day in after hours. Like yeah. I remember like morning to night laughing my ass off because you were just surrounded by people who understood what you were going through and like what you were doing. And it was kind of like the first time in our lives. I think a lot of us, at least me, I know Harry had like some friends in training before, but like for me, it was like the first time in my life I met people that were on the same path as me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of like been a massive help for you is like you early on met people on the same trajectory as you, like with Xander and like uh, these next gen guys and stuff like that. So how do you guys like in your tab group, like how do you benefit each other? What do you guys do for each other? What has pushed you guys? What has helped you guys push each other to where you're at right now? Yeah. I mean, it's relationship. It's just everything. Like we are joking with each other during the afternoons and the evenings. We're calling each other out on our shit. Um, we are, you know, every morning uh, pre-market, we are watching the, the market together. We're going over plans. We're building watch lists. Um, if one person says, I'm looking at this ticker, and we all pull it up and we're like, okay, that's non-niche. That's a big market cap or something. We'll, we'll call each other out. Um, but it's like, we go over charts together um, every Friday. We just started this. Every Friday, we have a, a call that we do. Um, and our, our group is like, it's Selena, AP Trades, um, the twin, Ponto. So like, there's a lot of us in there. Jesus, that's sick. Yeah, there's like 10 or 12 of us. But um, yeah, it's just, it's relationship. Like we're there for each other. When one of us has a bad day and we take a loss, we send our charts and we encourage each other. We talk about what we did wrong. Um, when one of us has a really good day, we congratulate each other. We are, you know, we talk about it. We go, what do we do right? How can we replicate this? Um, and then I mean, like me and Xander, we're, you know, even on our free time, your free time needs to be disciplined. So when I have free time, I'm in our Discord group and fooling around with with my friends, and and we're talking trading or talking life. Um, no joke, Xander and I just bought Oculuses, and we're gonna start to watch tape. <laughs> Harry, we're gonna watch. have to do this shit together. <laughs> Dude, you can watch tape and price action in your Oculus. So actually, tonight oh, we're good. just going to get on call together, put on the Oculuses, and watch price action, and oh just my like God. mess around. So Dude, it's like Harry and I can't do that shit. We'll be sitting there drink. We'll be sitting there drinking, just like staring at like random tape from like nineteen ninety seven. Three like, tapes by the end of that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude, that's no, sick, just, though. I, I love yeah. that dude i love that yeah it's just relationship it's it's like holding each other accountable it's having fun together it's talking you know the good the bad everything i like yeah. that i i feel i feel like you guys are going to be the uh like the poster guys for like the mic process from like start to finish because it, it, you're doing everything right like and, and you just got to keep on that path and, and keep doing what you're doing i yeah. i really love it yeah did yeah, you ever Oh, I just, I don't mean to cut you off. You can no, talk. Go for it. Um, no. Did you ever think about taking like a vacation or like a step away from trading for a little <laughs> bit just to. Um, okay. So coming up this next week, uh, we've got family coming in town. And so, you know, for my, my dad's memorial. So I'm forced to take a week vacation and it is killing me inside. There is nothing that I want to do more than just show up to the market every day. Um, now there is a, there is a balance to that. 
So I did not even consider taking a vacation. I'm not going to take a vacation for a year plus if I don't have to. I'm not going to do random, random crap. But there is a balance of not burning out because that is a reality. Yeah. Um, and you've got to have balance in your life, but the balance needs to be controlled by discipline. So if it's like, okay, I've got an hour break. I'm not going to go watch YouTube or go get drunk or go hang out with friends. If I've got an hour break where I need to refresh my mind, I will, um, you know, I'll, I'll go work out. I'll go running. I will talk to family. I'll, you know, um, meditate, whatever it is. So it's like, you need to have breaks so you don't burn out. But as far as vacation time or, or taking time away, I, ju I just can't do it. I, I want to succeed way too bad. And it's like, I'm holding my breath until I get to that point of consistency, which I'm just starting to get into. Mm -hmm. So vacations and time off is not something that I'm really, it's in the realm for me for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Cause I just wanted to maybe just touch on that ahead, because like, you know, I'm 21 now. I got into this when I was younger, like you as well. Yeah. And like, you do kind of remind me of like myself a lot. And, but just know that like the burnout is real, you know, like it is real and it will come. And like, you know, you, you think that it won't and you're like, oh, I'm unstoppable, right? You're young, but the burnout is really real and mm -hmm. it can, you know, it can, you don't understand until it kind of creeps up on you. So I would really recommend that you do kind of just try a little bit. Like, I know that you have the week coming up and, but also yeah. that's some, some heavy stuff too. Cause like, it's your dad's memorial. Like, it's not really the time off, you know, you're still going to be working emotionally, you know, like you're still going to be upset. And so, you know, I would just say, just know that the burnout is real. And when you do feel it, don't keep pushing, you know, yeah. um, you know, immediately take a break and say, guys, like I'm feeling burnout. Cause what I did is I just kept going through it and through it and through it and through it. Yeah. And then you get out on the other side of consistency, but you have a lot of other, you know, either like personal problems or whatever that you've neglected for so long, you know, that by the time you get out on the other side, it's like, where'd everyone go, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you're, you won't come out the same person on the other side as you started in this journey, it's impossible. But, yeah. um, you know, I would really recommend that you do, you know, cause James goes to, you know, he went to New Hampshire last weekend. James is moving around too, you know, but if yeah. you can take time off in between, and don't look at it as it's holding you back because my bit, my biggest pivots came from time off where I had a lot of time to think and reflect on my own trading and mistakes I've made and things I've done. That's really helped me as well. So, you know, like just that. understand that, you know, the burnout is real. It will come. You don't think it will, but it does. And it's really what you do with it that can really turn you from a six figure trader to a seven, you know, seven figure trader you know, that it's a big, 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 um, you know, I think it's a really big deal that, you know, a lot of guys, you know, just keep working and working and working and working. But, um, you know, when you have time to let your mind breathe and really soak in all that knowledge, you can really, really, really do really good things with it. So I just wanted to kind of point that out as well, because I've been there, you know, I got into this when I was like 17, you know, I'm 21 now. And, it, it will come and you don't expect it. And then you're just, you can't do work at all. Your brain can't soak up any knowledge at all. You're like a dry sponge, you know? So um, I just thought that I'd kind of point that out as well, because, you know, I've been there and even, like, I probably get burnout once every three months now, you know, mm -hmm. just because I burn myself out so hard where I just need to take a break and, you know, sleep in a little bit and really um, like I'm from Canada. So, I mean, up until now, you couldn't really take any vacations. And even now you're not even supposed to be traveling within the fucking provinces. So yeah. it's like, where the fuck am I supposed to go? You know, am I supposed to get on a plane and quarantine for two weeks without trading on the way back and pay for a fucking hotel? Like, you know, yeah. so. it's important. I, I think I, I have such a weird opposite like view of, of most, like I, I always see on Twitter, the people that are like, Oh, I'm putting in like 200 hours a week. I'm doing everything I can. And I always think that is really important. Like I think obviously studying at this is, is so key, but also like remembering like why you do it is so important. Like that's why I try to get away on the weekends. Like I try to like 
and I try not to open up Slack and do any of that shit like the best I can. Or like I, I spend like I, every morning before work, I go eat with my mom um, and my sister and like I see my, my dad when I can. Like it's just, you know, doing those things to remind yourself like why you're working so hard actually like propels you forward faster, I think. And it just it just makes it easier. And I think that the fact that you have this this group with you, um, you're going to be able to push each other pretty far. So I, I really like what you guys are doing. And um, I think I'm just very impressed. I, I don't see many young guys kind of putting in the uh, the head, the work into this that that you guys are. I have friends that are in their late 20s, early 30s that some of them want to do it. And I don't see them putting in half the work or even 25 percent. So I really I really uh, commend you guys. I think it's cool. No, I appreciate that. And it's, it's really true what you're saying, Harry. Um, I think like the key for me with that is like acknowledging what season I'm in. So like when I first started trading or first started like educating myself, I think that for anybody who's getting into it, there is a season where you need to like, you know, 100%. cut everything out. You need to like bottom down, do nothing but like trading. But then what you're saying, which is very true, is like acknowledging when is the season shifting to where it's time for you to take a deep breath or it's time for you to allow your thoughts to kind of sink in. Um, and I actually, I, I did push myself too far as like a couple months ago and I, I felt that burnout. And, um, and that's, you know, when stuff with the family was happening. So I kind of had like a forced time off. Yeah. And um, I came back to it, like, you know, the beginning of October feeling really refreshed. So I do, yeah, that's, it's really true what you're saying. And it's so difficult for me though. Cause it's like, if I take time off, I feel like I'm slacking and I feel like I'm missing opportunity. I've got like FOMO, man. <laughs> no, no, dude, it's tough. It's tough. Like if, if Harry and I aren't even here, we're texting each other, like talking about like Slack, talking about shit that's going on, something being said or whatever. Talking so it's some like, fucking shit about someone. <laughs> it's just always, it's always such I'm like, <laughs> it, it's literally tough, but it's, it's just, it's hard. It's hard to avoid this stuff, but I guess where you're at in your career now, like what's something you're like struggling with? Is there anything that's giving you trouble from getting to the next step? Um, like kind of touch on that if you can yeah I mean definitely it's um psychology uh my own mind uh you guys talked about this with David uh the last podcast that mm -hmm. was yep. uploaded, uh imposter syndrome and yep. that's something that that's actually been a topic in our tag group for since then and we've been dwelling on it a lot um that's the most difficult thing for me uh well go you know going into October and everything I found like a level of consistency and I feel like I can look at a chart and I know what to do. But what I'm trying to do now is size up into that. Nothing crazy. You know, I'm not like yep. pushing, tripling my size and stuff. I'm sizing up small, but when I go to size up, I like get like panicky and I feel like, no, like I, I can't size up yet. Like I haven't learned the process enough or I, ha I don't have enough consistency or I'm going to take big losses. Um, so I guess that would be the biggest thing that's stopping me from moving forward would be psychology of like trying to, get past the fear of losses, get past the fear of feeling like I don't know enough. Um, and that imposter syndrome is definitely something that I'm trying to overcome right now. Yeah, I think you're in a situation where, you know, you have a bit of the knowledge now and, but like the, the account is kind of lagging a bit behind. Mm -hmm. And what I kind of did when I was like in that stage is like, I completely stopped focusing on the PL day today. I completely stopped focusing on those kind of fluctuations. And I really tried to make good habits in my trading every single day. And by doing that, that has kind of like snowballed and snowballed and snowballed yeah. because p &L has always been a lagging indicator, right? You get the knowledge, you get the experience, you get the whatever. p &L slowly lags behind that. And it's a slow process. And you're like, man, I know how to do this. I know how to do that. Like what is stopping me? But it's just the p l is such a slow lagging process. And what people do is that you know, they think p &L should be X or p &L should be this. And they get in a situation where they start over trading and they start really trying to make that p &L catch up and catch up and catch up and catch up. And so what you can do is just focus on the process and, and don't focus on who you want to be or who you want to become or someone else or me or James or anyone else like that. Just really, really focus on your own growth and your own journey. And I know it sounds kind of dumb and kind of stupid, but that is something that 
really, really helped me a lot. Like I'm, and I talked about this with David too. Like I have half a Twitter muted. I have half these fuckers muted because I don't fucking care about them, bro. They're not like Alex or Bao or James or people in my own circle. They're external. And so I try and keep barriers around that external life to keep these people out. Like it's like a, I'm a, you know, fucking guy with a spear and I'm in my circle, you know, if you try and come in and you come in too fast or too quickly or too far, I'm going to fucking stab you, get the fuck out. you know. <laughs> and I also wanted to touch on one thing where, um, you know, <laughs> that was fucked. I also, to, <laughs> oh, God. I also wanted to touch yeah. on one thing where, um, you know, we kind of talked about earlier where we talked about, uh, you know, overworking, you know, I ask myself all the time, um, you know, if I didn't put in this much work, would, and like, I took breaks and went out and partied every weekend, would I be here? And like, that's a hard question to struggle with too. Would I have made it on my own or was it that extra work and that burnout that took me to this point, you know? So, I mean, you're always juggling that in your mind, you know, every single second, you know, just wondering, like when people ask me like, oh, what got you here? What got you there? like do I say it was the burnout and the whatever or you know like so I don't know you know it's a hard question to struggle with and I think everyone is different with it you know yeah yeah so I I think uh I think with the imposter stuff well first of all uh the last week I, I took Harry's advice and I I just unfollowed on Twitter like it wasn't even more so people some people but it was more so like I unfollowed like any people anyone who was arrogant like just like talked about trading like they were like a godsend and i got rid of those people i got rid of the negative kind of like news feeds too like anything that i could look at and like bother me and like give me kind of like a weird mental psychological state in the morning and even at night and i got rid of it and honest to god i sleep better at night i feel better like i just like am generally i feel more positive so that was a really good piece of advice and i I really like that and then as far as the imposter syndrome thing um i think everyone has that at some point they're like is this real life and uh, a good like this might be kind of off the path so stay with me but I uh, I was talking to one of my clients who's a heart surgeon and I asked him this kind of question about the imposter syndrome because we were talking about trading actually and I was saying how that's what it felt like this was a while ago and he was saying like he's like you know I went through all this work at school I studied my ass off like I, I put in the hours I did this so that by the time I got there he's like I didn't feel like an imposter. I just felt like I was getting kind of what I deserved and like I, what I was, what I earned because I put in so many hours and so much time uh, that like, he's like, I just didn't have that. And I kind of took that into my trading. Like I have put in the work and like, I know people who have put in the work and like, so, and obviously it doesn't come right away sometimes, but when it does, it's kind of like, fuck yeah. Like I'm here. I need to accept it. And then that's like a whole new mentality of like, all right, now I know what I'm doing and how to execute it. And then it's just doing what you're doing now just slowly sizing up, slowly growing. And, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think the prop you'll know if it's imposter syndrome, if you have those like dumb fucking, I think people go on streaks of good luck where they, they win a couple of times and then they blow up, you know, but if you're someone who's like actually in that, that winning mentality and like your, your losses are controlled, your emotions are controlled, then it's like that imposter syndrome, I think will slowly start to fade away naturally. And, yeah and like like i said you guys are killing it now so it's like just eventually you'll wake up one day like it hit, it hit me like not that long ago where i was just like this is my life like, this is my job i come i have a fucking atm machine in my house and like i just wake up i roll over to my computer and like this is what i do it's not like a scared thing anymore it's not like a, am i gonna be successful with this it's just like this is it yeah. so that'll that'll hit you at some point too and and sooner rather than you think i i think too so yeah, I agree. like I said, man, I love what you're doing, and and obviously we're we've hit our kind of time limit here. But the last piece for you, if do you have any last minute advice for any new traders coming in, I mean, don't give up, right? Like, um, don't give up. It's gonna be a really long journey. You're gonna have days where you want nothing but to just throw your computer at the wall, where something is just not clicking, or somebody's doing better than you. And you've just got to, what Bao always says, don't compare your level one to somebody's a level 100. Um, yep. So just stay in your lane. Don't give up. Keep fighting for it. Um, and keep it simple. That, that really screwed me over because I'm a major overthinker. And specifically with the MIC process, it's so simple. Like there's so much to it, but it's, it's so simple to learn. It's so simple to follow. You just have to get the process inside of yourself 
and then it becomes like second nature, which is what I'm starting to feel, you know? So keep it simple. Don't overthink things. Don't try to rush it. Stay in your lane and just keep moving forward. Every single day, just do one thing to move forward and surround yourself with people that promote that, that encourage you with that, that don't make you feel like you should be doing something you're not, that don't make you feel like you should be going all in, right? Like surround yourself with people that encourage you in the proper way to succeed in trading and not in the wear Lambo mindset, right? Like you've got to find the I right that. to surround yeah, yourself with. I completely agree. Yeah. It, I'm, I think for you now, it's just a matter of slowly compounding those habits and slowly compounding the PL and just everything for you. It's just a game of time compounding yeah. and keeping your losses under control. And, you know, you, you know, if you can do that, then you're going to be super successful. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Say so we cut it there. That was good. Yeah. I like that ending. Awesome.